My name is Anthony Patak. Creativity is solving problems within constraints. I compose music, I paint, I write, I program computers. Uh, these are all things that I consider creative. In, in my case, I think it's important to be aware of what's operating underneath a creative process, to have a clear sense of what those constraints are and in certain cases to create those constraints for yourself. It seems like, you know, you've had some constraints imposed on you in your life recently, yeah? Um, with, with, uh, with, you know, developing... Let's just say it, brain cancer. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, was diagnosed with brain cancer, and that would definitely be a significant constraint. Even I, with my awareness of um, constraints and creativity find it difficult to operate in a creative manner, particularly uh, when I was undergoing treatment for cancer. Um, it was uh, impossible to be creative. Are all people creative? Can all people be creative? It is a matter of degrees of freedom that they may or may not find themselves in. Um, or capable of political constraints, biological constraints, social constraints, psychological constraints can act as a catalyst for creativity, but also act as um, a, a, an inhibitor to creativity. It, it doesn't have to be something that's unprecedented, but the act of making something is engaging in creativity. Clearly, censorship is, a, is a, an issue that would inhibit creativity, can destroy creative minds. Everything in my life is a problem that needs to be solved within constraints, and therefore, creativity is my way of survival in the world, and I need to practice that. I can be at peace with that somehow. A person who is deceased, um, who I think is highly creative, a uh, composer, American composer named John Cage. The work that I'm thinking of that I regard as highly creative is a work called Four Minutes and 33 Seconds, which is a composition of composed silence. Because within the canon of, of music, um, the ultimate constraint is not to play a note. <laughs> The ultimate constraint is silence. On a day-to-day -day basis, I interact with my son, Aiden. He's four and a half years old, and he's very creative. I watch him draw, and what I find fascinating about it is that he seems to be drawing not based on the space on the paper, but based on the motion of the pen in time almost as if he's attempting to capture a, a temporal movement on paper, but within a, a multi-dimensional um, time space. I mean, this is really what I see him doing. And I learn from him. I learn from his creative process every time I watch. And uh, it's really quite remarkable. And my son has some limitations. My son was born with a disability. Um, he was born with Down syndrome. Children don't know the rules, so they don't know when they're breaking the rules. With children in general, um, they're not afraid, so they'll take risks. And um, that lends itself well to creativity. Um, so I would agree with your statement that children are more likely to be creative than adults. I do not experience creative blocks. I don't feel that I have a choice. Like, I have to be creative, and I have to be ready at all times to come up with a solution to a given problem. In the case that I have a deadline, and let's say we were to call it a block, the thing that I do is I break things, and by breaking things, I learn a new pathway to start over. I broke my theremin, 
which is a musical instrument that I play. Right. No, not out of frustration. I broke it out of necessity. There was a need to break it. It got to the point where there was a need to break it and knew the consequences and was prepared to accept them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that we can ignore that in the book of Genesis, the Lord God is seen as the creator. There is something to be said about faith and about doubt in a creative state of being. The creative impulse is to take a leap of faith that you can solve a problem. And the creative impulse requires doubt in a given system that you want to investigate. Well, maybe I don't think that this thing works exactly the way that everyone else says it works. Let me try and poke at it a little bit and see what happens. The confidence to fail, to take that leap of faith, to fall off the cliff, to break things and see what happens, is important for creativity. Or, as I said, a creative way of being. I like to think of it as a way of being. Because you create a life for yourself, exercise the opportunity to create a family, there's a lot that goes into what creativity is. The birth of my son was such a remarkable experience, a creative activity, and uh, it was just unbelievable holding my son for the first time. I mean, that was the ultimate kind of creative reward was to have this life. There's this symbiotic kind of relationship that is there that is forever. It's beautiful. I think creativity is difficult in the sense that it requires responsibility and awareness. And this actually reminds me of a um, teacher I once had. He said, creativity and a nickel will get you a ride on the subway. So he was throwing creativity away because he was saying, that's the, that's the easy part. He said, the hard part is getting this to be technically correct. Like getting, uh, just like what we're doing here today, getting the white balance of the camera correct, getting the lighting correct. and you know, to an extent, communication requires a certain level of correctness. If, if you could interview one person about their crea creative process, who, who do you, like this type of interview, do you have anybody in mind? I would interview Dr. Predi Raghavan. She's a neuroscience researcher at um, the Rusk Institute. Her specialty is in... Um, the dexterity of the hand in patients with traumatic brain injuries. I, ha I have worked with her on a few studies that involved uh, playing music while being hooked up to an EKG machine. And um, she would monitor my um, neuromuscular response as I would play. I think the research she's doing is, is really fascinating. It's, it's essential for creativity to have a degree of dexterity with your hands. Okay, so now we're at to this final question of if you can help me do something creative right now. Um, so I'm not sure... Uh, you know, we well, no, I, I knew this question was coming up, so I've prepared an activity for you. Um, I need you to uh, get up and select a book off of the wall. Okay. Any book. Okay. Turn to any page. Write down three or four words on a piece of paper. Then construct a paragraph where you use those three or four words as anchor points in the paragraph, or as ac an access in the paragraph. So you can go do that right now. <laughs> I'm going to help you be creative. Okay, 
So that was Ditches, Terrorist, Crying, and Sports. I don't really like watching sports. This is because I'd rather be playing sports. I sometimes think athletes get paid too much. These athletes act like terrorists. I also don't get it when people are so into sports that they find themselves crying over their team losing. That kind of being down in the ditches is useless. Congratulations. Thank you very much.